Have you ever felt that you're just not good at word problems? Or when you read a word problem, you think, I have absolutely no idea how to get started? If you answered yes to either of those questions, then this video is for you. Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to go over my top three problem-solving strategies to help you solve word problems. Let's get started. All right, we're going to start with the number three best strategy, in my opinion, for solving word problems, and that is solve a simpler problem. Now, this strategy works really, really well uh, in two situations. One, if the problem you're trying to solve has really difficult numbers, what that means is Maybe they are really large numbers or fractions or decimals or mixed numbers, numbers that are hard to work with. The other situation would be if you have just variables or kind of a lot of vague information. Either one of those, this strategy can work really well. So the first part is you want to make it simpler. And to do that, cut out any extra information that you don't need. Once you've done that, then if you have difficult numbers, like fractions or decimals or mixed numbers, just make them easier. Make them whole numbers. If you have a lot of variables and or it's a very vague problem, you want to substitute. Choose some values for those variables. And then once you've done that, solve the problem. Hopefully at that point, it's much easier to solve. Once you do that, you think, oh, I got it. I understand what to do now. And you figure out the steps you need to solve that problem. Once you've got those steps, go back and do it for the original problem, the original numbers or original variables. Let's go to example. When you read a question like that and you don't know where to get started, think of these strategies. Now, this problem is difficult because it's got a whole bunch of fractions. That's tough. We're working with difficult numbers. So we're gonna make it much simpler. But first, we're gonna cut out information we don't need. So notice, I'm just making it much shorter and much simpler. Now, again, I haven't changed the numbers yet. So 2 thirds and 1 fifth, that's hard. I'm still confused. I don't know what to do. So in this situation, I'm gonna change the numbers. If I just think of, we're talking about money raised, let's just pick an actual whole number, an amount of money. 2 thirds is greater than 1 fifth, so I'm gonna make sure the numbers I choose represent that. Let's just say the money raised from the website is $20. And let's say instead of a fifth, let's just say $5. If I think of the problem with those numbers, how many times more was raised from the website than in person? How many times more? Well, if I did 20 divided by 5 four times more, that's what I did to solve it with the numbers I made up. But now that I know that that's the process, I'm going to go back to my original numbers. So instead of 20 divided by 5, I'm going to do 2 thirds divided by 1 fifth. And it's 3 and a third times more. So that's how we use the strategy of solve a simpler problem. When we have fractions or decimals or mixed numbers or really large numbers, we want to make it simpler. All right, next, my number two strategy, guess check and revise. This strategy sounds super simple. You basically do exactly what it says in the name, but there's little tips that I think will help you be even more effective using this strategy. So first, this strategy, guess, check, revise, works really well when you need to meet multiple conditions. And what that means is a problem that says, well, you have to do this and you also have to do this. Maybe it'll make more sense when you see the example. The first step in guess, check, advice is to guess, and you guess an answer that meets one of those conditions. Don't think too hard. A lot of times people, when they look at these word problems and they're thinking, oh, what should my guess be? What should my guess be? Uh, and they're stressing out. Don't. Just make a guess. Obviously, after you make that first guess, then we are going to check. And to check, we check it against the other condition. We already know our first guess met one condition. Now we check to see if it meets the other. Once you check, if it meets the second condition, great, you're done, you solved it. If it doesn't, then we revise our guess. And what that means is we're using information that we just gathered 
from looking at or from checking our first guess to make a better guess. Adjust your guess based on uh, the information you just got from when you checked it, and then you go through the whole process again. All right, so let's look at the example. Is this a good strategy for using uh, guest check revise? Absolutely. There are two conditions we have to make. One, Sally has four times as many cards as Emily, and two, together they have 90. Guest check revise is absolutely perfect here. Uh, so first, my first guess, I want to make sure it meets one of the conditions. For me, I'm just going to start with what's first, and that is Sally has four times as many cards as Emily. Let's say Emily, I'm just guessing, right? Emily has 10 cards, then Sally has 40, right? Four times as many, okay, done. I met the first condition. Now it's time to check. Together they have to have 90. Well, 10 plus 40 does not equal 90. Do I need to revise? Yes, I need to revise, okay? So now let's go back again. But this time, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what information did I just gather? How can I make my guess better? Well, I know that 10 and 40, 10 plus 40 is not even close to 90. I gotta increase my guess for Emily. I'm gonna say 15. Emily is 15, Sally four times, that is going to be 60. Now let's check, is 15 plus 60 90? And no, it is not, but, we are getting closer. We're in the right direction. We just hopefully need to start fine tuning a little bit. So do I need to revise? Yes. I need to increase Emily a little bit more, not as much as before. I'm gonna say 18. If Emily is 18, four times 18 is, let's see, 72. 18 plus 72, that actually is equal to 90. So do I need to revise? No. Once you get that no, then you're done. I know that Emily has 18 cards and Sally has 72. So my final answer, how many cards does Sally have? She has 72 cards. Now let's check out the top spot for problem solving strategies. All right, it's time for the top spot, the number one problem solving strategy, in my humble opinion, which is Draw a picture. Yes, draw a picture. It's the easiest strategy to actually do, but it is the most helpful and the most widely used strategy I think I've, I've used myself or I've seen other people use throughout all my years studying math. Now, drawing a picture might sound super simple of a strategy, but there are a couple things that will be helpful uh, to know if you're gonna use this strategy even, even more effectively. So first, this strategy works really well when you are solving a problem that involves shapes, obviously, any pictures or situations that are difficult to visualize. So what that means is, you know, it's talking about, this problem is talking about something, some shape or some picture or some situation, and it's really hard to think of what's happening in your head. It's hard to picture it. So in that situation, draw a picture. First, make it big. Do not draw your little pictures like this and try to label things like this where you can't even read it. Make sure you include any information that could be useful to your picture. So any labels, any distances, uh, any units or other shapes, include those. The more you can include, the more detailed and the better your picture is going to be and the more it's going to help when you're trying to solve the problem. Now let's check out the example. Let's draw a picture. What are we gonna draw? Well, first, it's talking about a rectangle, so let's draw a rectangle. Now, we also wanna include any distances or any other details that we can to make it a better picture. So I'm gonna include, this is 70 feet. This would obviously then be 40 feet. It's getting a little bit more detailed. Now we're talking about fence posts. Brian puts the fence post every 10 feet. So for a fence post, I don't need anything fancy. I don't need a really fancy drawing. I'm just gonna do a dot. And I can start wherever. I'm gonna start right here in the corner. There's my first 
fence post, and it's every 10 feet. So I'm just going to count and go around. There is 10, 20, 60, 70. That's perfect, right? Because this distance is 70 feet. I'm going to keep going. 30, 40. Again, that's 40 feet. I'm going to do the same. 20, 30, and then 40 would be on my last one. I've got all my fence posts drawn, so the only thing I have to do now is count. 20, 21, 22. So my final answer is Brian will need 22 fence posts. And that's how you use draw a picture. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.